You're scared of me because you can't control me. You don't. And you never will. But that doesn't mean I'm your enemy. The superhero that changed how we see comic books today. The man who made us hope again. Superman isn't just a dude from Krypton. He's bigger than everything he stands for. He's the Man of Steel. No. Without a doubt the most popular hero that's come alive from the pages of comic books in the last century, Superman's gotten more cinematic representation than anyone else. While it's believed that he's more of a god with kick-ass powers, which he does by the way, that doesn't take anything away from the man underneath the suit. So today we're not going to talk about the 687th time that Superman punched, laser beamed, frosted or swung away villains from oblivion in fights. Today we're going to talk about the badass moments that make Superman so super. All the hopes and dreams of Krypton living you now. I'm so proud of you, son. We're starting off this list with a biggie. Superman's iconic black suit. Comic fans would recognize the stunning black suit Superman wore after coming back from the dead in the death of the Superman story arc. Justice League more or less has the same arc and gives Superman the suit of his dreams. But this is no ordinary scene, mind you. This is the first time Kal-El returns to his ship after coming alive with the mother boxes. He's back. As he slowly regains his memory, his father's voice clouds his head. The same voice that guided him in Man of Steel, the same voice he last heard on planet Krypton. Superman's red and blue suit is an exhilarating symbol of hope, justice and freedom, but in this moment, Kal-El becomes one with his origin, his planet and his people. But you gave hope to their world. You need to show them who you are. He ignores other suits and even his iconic red and blue one and straight up heads for the black one. The Kryptonians famously wore black suits and in this moment, for a change, we saw the Kryptonian side of Superman. You've grown stronger here than I ever could have imagined. Sticking with the modern day DCEU as another one makes the cut here. This time it's the moment that the baby bird flew away from his nest. The moment Jor-El inspired Kal-El to take the leap of faith and with it, the first flight of Superman. Clark Kent spent most of his young life hiding and suppressing himself in the nondescript village of Smallville. He finally meets his father Jor-El who's super dead. Who are you? I am your father Cal. Clark enters the ship, comes to know about his origin, his stay on Earth, and enjoys a quality father-son bonding session. He heads out wearing his gorgeous cape, his father's solemn monologue ringing in his head, and off he goes. Zack Snyder's command over visuals is just incredible. The entire montage of Superman learning to fly, failing, and getting up again is just iconic. We see a man exploring his powers, getting excited over his capabilities, falling down and gathering the courage to try yet again. Add in that Hans Zimmer soundtrack and it's just a three minute visual masterpiece. Okay, we all know Superman is just super strong, like really strong, but barely has anyone proved it so graphically other than this moment. So there's a bad guy doing bad things and blowing stuff away with a friggin' chain gun. Kudos to two security guards who thought they could stop a chain gun with their pistols. Any bravery award for them, anyone? Anyway, the bad guys shoot back and it looks like the end until we see something faster than a speeding bullet. And no, it's not the speed of Neymar falling on the ground. It's Superman. Like a badass hero, he comes between flying bullets and too stupid to run security guards and practically stops everything. The bad guy tries to be smart and thinks, hmm, it's indestructible, so maybe I should try shooting him in the eyes. At least that's what they do in Attack on Titan anyway. <laughs> Bad luck, bro. Bullets mean shit to Superman and his eyes. The slow-mo just gives one of the coolest ever Superman scenes as the bullet just crumbles down after hitting Superman's eyes. And he didn't even flinch. Imagine being the most powerful entity in the whole effing world and willingly surrendering to a puny government. Superman has the power, but more than that, he has grace and dignity. Because deep down, Clark Kent is a good man. He constantly proves himself to be a non-threat, yet petty humans create the rift. So I urge Superman to come to this hill of the people tomorrow to see those who have suffered. Lex Luthor masterminds a capital explosion when Superman's ready to talk to people in the government willingly, like in any sane democratic society. <laughs> I guess capital attacks have become a thing now, right? Anyway, Superman surrenders himself, suppresses his godly powers, and still it's not enough. Because today is a day for truth. 
because only by speaking... The entire scene is so tense. The claustrophobic silence, the mild vibrations, and the inkling of something bad's about to happen. And it does. The explosion kills anyone and everyone inside the building, leaving Superman alone, forever cursed as the villain. Thank you, uh... I'm gonna need a little room to work. The music suddenly shifts into a tragic note as Superman lays standing. He can save himself from any explosion, but not the people around him. The weight of failure gets too real for us, and in a rare moment, a mere human Lex Luthor trumps the son of Krypton. Okay, now back to everything Superman stands for, hope. He saves lives and gives new hope, like in this moment. So airplanes are doing the only thing they're supposed to do in action movies, crash and burn. Pilots have lost control, passengers are shitting bricks inside, and there's a nice little baseball stadium on the ground about to become a memorial site. So what does Clark Kent do? Everything Homelander doesn't. He reaches just in time as the plane's falling, holds the tip of the plane to reduce the velocity, and just when people are counting their final seconds, he slows it down, and safely lands it on the field. No one dies and everyone gets another shot at life. Superman's not just sheer power. During the inspiring moments like this one, he stands for hope and goodness. The only casualty in this rescue mission was the plane. The moment that was cheesier than a double cheeseburger. Save Martha is one scene people love to troll. I think it doesn't just go along with the moment. Batman's pissed at Superman who thinks he's a fake god masquerading as a savior. He sees him as a threat and it comes from his deep-seated childhood trauma. The whole Batman versus Superman fight I totally dig, then it falls apart just because their mothers have the same name. Imagine all that build-up, all those heavy dialogues, and it ends up being all for nothing just because Batsy remembered his mother. What the hell? But we're not here to talk about 69 things that went wrong in the dawn of justice, let's just say how selfless of Clark he was to try saving his closest people even when he's staring at death. The kryptonite's already weakened him to powder and Batman's about to stab him to death and all Superman does is spend his last breath saving his mother of course. Clark shows his typical hero persona and his selfless act of love eventually saves him. So I guess Zack Snyder did use the power of love. Hmm. Remind me, how's that again? Uh, with the power of love? You do not remember me. I'm Jor-El. I'm your father. Say what you will, but Superman has had a pretty rough journey personally. Being entrusted with such powers, responsibilities, and ungrateful humans all around, he's bound to feel the heat, isn't he? There's only so much a person can take, even for Superman. So Clark goes for a bit of soul searching, and we mean the whole frigging Arctic. Buoyed by his father's words, young Clark takes the Kryptonian crystal and finds his corner of solace in the icy Arctic. The entire scene of how the fortress of solitude comes into existence is just glorious. It's grand, it's stunning, and it was way ahead of its time. Superman's Fortress of Solitude helps him in seeing things with clarity, and it's been a staple in the comics for decades. So when it finally materialized on screen, it just made everyone's childhood memorable. Even the background score amazingly paves way to a more somber take on Clark Kent's life. John Williams is a genius. Were you in love with him? He was Superman. Everyone was in love with him. No matter how heartbroken you are, no matter how alone you feel, if you're Superman, then the whole world looks up to you. You can't run away. Throughout his life, Clark Kent goes through some serious shit, losing his biological parents, adopted father, his own planet, the love of his life, the list just goes on. In Superman Returns, it was Lois Lane's rejection that pushed him to the brink, blurring his conviction. But men are creatures of habit, and so is Superman. As he flies away to space, he takes a pause and recalls his father's words. It's Marlon Brando, guys, so it's gotta be epic. Kal-El gets his much needed clarity and focuses on the humans of Earth. All the pain, suffering, anger and fear and he can only do so much. He listens, the noises grow louder and he snaps. Enough of being heartbroken and all, it's time to be super again.
Superman did some Barry Allen here. I mean, what are you even doing if not using your super speed to turn back time and undead the people in your life? Well, Superman didn't miss the opportunity to let his rage come out in full power. Lois Lane's dead, again, and a grief-stricken Superman just flies away in defiance and gives away all his rationality for a moment of emotional weakness. He flies against the time around the Earth so fast that it turns back the clock to the moment where Lois is still alive. When he finally comes back to meet Lois, it's such a powerful scene that it changes everything. Although it would have had worse consequences if it was anything like the Flashpoint Paradox. Also, that Christopher Reeve scream? My god, it was enough to make Darkseid question his Earth plans. That's my morning alarm by the way, nothing like a Mr. Reeve scream to get me going. Can't stay still for a second. The iconic moment that started a movement and changed the entire landscape of comic books. When Christopher Reeve donned the much-loved blue and white suit for the first time, it stood for wonderful things to come. And they did. Look how comic book movies are killing it at the box office today, and it all started with the groundbreaking success of Superman. So the very first introduction of Man of Tomorrow has got to be the best Superman moment, and why wouldn't it be? The classic hero saves the day at the end started from here. We have everything in place, the familiar Superman transformation, civilians in danger, and our hero giving us hope at the right time. Christopher Reeves charmed the hell out of this film, and that iconic John Williams score made me watch it over and over again. A friend. Superman is the embodiment of goodness. He's the hero, the harbinger of hope, but that doesn't mean he's got his shit sorted. Time and time again, we've seen Clark Kent shed his heroic persona to fight his inner battles like a common man. And time and time again, he's come out as the winner. Scenes involving Superman are always cool, but it's extra awesome when there's some unique issues that he just can't conquer easily. So what's your favorite Superman scene? Comment below. Also tell us the scenes we missed here. If you guys make enough noise in the comments, I might just return with a volume two. Like the video and share it with friends who love to take a nostalgic trip. Go back and watch the evergreen Superman scenes and don't forget to subscribe to the TV Regents.